Good morning, everybody. If you could do me a favor, if you have an empty seat in your row, could you just squish a little together, pretend we like each other? Um, it's just, it'll make it easier for anybody who comes in late if they don't have to cut in front of everybody trying to get in the middle. Um, besides, how can we shunken if there's an empty seat? Doesn't work. All right. Um, just a quick introduction. My name is Ralph Lux. I'm the education director at Puppet Labs. I am excited to be here. Um, I am, in fact, a, a German native. I was born and raised here um, in Preussen. Sorry. Um, but um, I will be talking in English for those of you who don't speak German. And if I do go too fast, let me know. Just raise your hand. And if I bore you to tears, you can also raise your hand. You just have to let me know which one it is. Okay. Um, this is an American thing, right? So um, Puppet requires that I tell you something about myself. Um, I'm a scuba diver. Uh, that's why I live in Colorado. Never mind. Um, but uh, always strive for balance and uh, definitely I'm looking forward to talking to all of you. Um, here's my introductory slide. If you want to get a hold of me, it's ralph at puppetlabs.com. And you may follow me on Twitter, but trust me, you don't want to because I don't use it. So um. <laughs> I actually have five followers. I don't know why, quite honestly. <laughs> All right, um, just a quick poll. How many of you are using Puppet right now? Wow, awesome. That's very good, good to hear. Uh, more than a year? Okay, more than two years? More than 10 years? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, are you on, uh, how many of you are on 2.x? And uh, Okay. And how many have you switched to 3x? Oh, good, good. Um, we're excited that you switched to 3x because a lot of really good stuff is in there. All right, and uh, a word from our sponsor. How many of you are using Puppet Enterprise? <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. All right, so first of all, we want to talk a little bit about the state of uh, IT. And I think it's no surprise to any of you if you work in IT that things are getting faster and faster, right? It used to be that if I wanted to upgrade my system, I would take it down and I would find the window of opportunity, right? Where users didn't need it. Um, how many of you still have that window of opportunity? Good. Um, most of us, there is no more window of opportunity, right? Things have to happen immediately. And, and certainly, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't, um, decide that I wanted to do everything uh, overnight because nobody would possibly use the system overnight. Um, for those of you um, who know, uh, I actually started working for the German government in, in North Rhine-Westphalia and I worked at the data center. And the data center was about the size of four of these rooms full of tape drives. And my job was, it was to be the type tape librarian so that I would get the lists and I'd have to pull the tapes off of the shelves and put them in a, on a special car and send them downstairs. And it, it baffles me that all of that capacity, we had 30,000 tapes plus another uh, 10,000 cartridges um, is now on one, on one disk drive, right? So things are changing a lot. How many of you have heard the words more and faster recently, right? It's uh, definitely uh, always demanded. Um, you know, there used to be this formula that said that you, for every 25 systems, you hire one system administrator. Um, it doesn't work anymore, right? So definitely there's a need to do more with less. Some of the old practices that we used to have, um, you know, 10,000 uh, machines will take you a year to upgrade. Doesn't work anymore. Um, and so there, we cannot work the way that we used to. And by the same token, some of the old constraints that we used to have are no longer there, 
right? We can interact now with each other. Um, we have uh, standards. And, and so we have an opportunity to automate things because things actually now are talking to each other. And this is where Puppet is coming in. Puppet is all about automating your system setup and allowing you to control your entire data center and maintain that configuration um, from one computer and with one set of instructions. All right. Already talked about that. Okay, so how can you achieve high performance in your organizations right now? It has, there's two huge important things. Can we turn the lights off down here? It might be um, Bernd? Okay, well, um, I was just thinking that if we put them out in the back, you, in the front, you might be able to see the slide a little bit better. Anyway, there we go. Is that better? Okay, no snoring, please. Okay, so um, today there's two big things that, that everybody's looking for. That's version control. In other words, I need to know exactly which version of which software is on each of my servers. And automation, making sure that I can deploy my code across machines without having to manually respecify re that. Okay, and so those are the two big common practices these days that everybody's looking for. And that's why I'm here. Puppet allows you to do both of those. Pu Puppet allows you to control your versions uh, by simply specifying what it is you want on each server. And it allows you to do so automatedly. So what is Puppet? Most of you are using Puppet, so you're already familiar with this, but really it is about enabling you to change your technology without friction. Enabling you to say, this is what my new data center needs to look like, and to deploy it to all of your data center services, servers. Puppet has been around um, for quite a while, since 2004. And as you can see, we have customers just about everywhere. So we have uh, every major uh, vertical represented, financial, uh, technology, government, manufacturing. And also we have all the way from the, some of the top 500 all the way to some of the smaller customers. And so that's the beauty of Puppet is that it is um, deployable, that it is scalable, and that it will fit the needs of the small company as well as the large industry 500. <coughs> So how does Puppet work? Basically, Puppet allows you to define your infrastructure in code, and it allows you to write a catalog that says, this is what I want the system to look like. Um, and one thing that is really nice about Puppet is that rather than having to say, here is how I want you to deploy the software, Puppet takes all of the how out of the picture and allows you just to say, this is what it needs to look like. So instead of having to say, make sure that in um, Ubuntu you use this command, and in CentOS you use this command, and in Windows you use this command, Basically, Puppet allows you to say, I want my system to look like this. I want these users to be set up. I want these applications to be set up. I want to make sure these are the versions of the software that I have. And you just simply specify the catalog. Server with user, user is part of this group, and so forth and so forth. And then Puppet will take away all of the pain of having to try and figure out how to make it happen. It will make it happen for you. And not only will it make it happen for you, but it sends you a report that says, here are the changes that I executed, and here are um, the things that need to be, that had to, to be done, basically. And here's what it looks like now. And then it will go through and enforce that. So if you have a little user that loves to change their environment, um, somebody like me, you know, right? Um, Puppet will go in and clean up after them. How does it work? Well, basically, Puppet, uh, we have a Puppet master and we have a Puppet agent, and the agent reports. It, it generates a catalog of facts. And the facts are, these are the users that exist, these are the accounts that exist, <coughs> excuse me, these are the applications that exist, and then it sends that to the master agent. And the master agent compares that catalog of facts with the catalog that you defined. And if everything looks great, then it just does a check mark. It doesn't do any action. 
and if something is amiss, then it fixes the problem that's amiss. The beauty of that is, is that you can run Puppet 500 times, not that you would want to, but you could, and it wouldn't constantly flip-flop back and forth. It would only implement those changes that are actually required. Okay? Um, it then, once it does the comparison, it implements the changes that it needed to, needed to make, and it gives you a report. And then it goes through and cycles through that er time and time again. Any questions on how Puppet works? Okay. Considering all of you, most of you are using Puppet, hopefully I said exactly what you're actually doing. How does it work? We have a Puppet master server, and the Puppet master server basically has it, your graphical user interface. It has the reporting capability. It has the catalogs that you define, and it has the security. Okay? And then each, server, each node that is attached to it is an agent. And in the agents, basically, it says, I am a web server, I am a content server, I'm a database server, I'm an application server. And Puppet Master then recognizes what it should look like and implements the right configuration on those nodes. Those nodes can be virtual, they can be in the cloud, they can be physical boxes, it doesn't matter. How is Puppet doing? We're doing well, very well. We are growing quickly. So um, how many of you have used or are aware of the Forge? OK, great. Um, so the Forge, a few years ago, um, had, a, had several hundred um, modules on it. We now have over 1,000 modules on it. Those are modules that are contributed by users like yourself. Those are modules that are contributed by the community and maintained by the main community and that we as, as Puppet make, basically make available to everybody so that if you need to deploy an NGINX server, you don't necessarily have to recreate everything from scratch. You can actually find those modules on the Forge, download them, and deploy them in your own system, sometimes unchanged, sometimes you can make them your own. We have over 80,000 people who have downloaded modules and have downloaded Puppet, and um, I'm excited. I'm the education director that we have trained over 5,000 users on Puppet right now. In fact, in 2013, we trained more users than we have in all the years before. So over half of those 5,000 were trained in last year, and, and we are experiencing enormous growth, which I'm very excited about. How can you get involved? It's actually very easy to get involved. We're a very community-driven company. And um, in fact, the re very reason you're here at Puppet Camp, right? We don't have a campfire in front, but that's kind of the image that we want to portray is that you are part of a community. You can help with the documentation. And we get that help quite frequently. If we make a mistake, you can just let us know, and we will, we will fix the mistake. Right? Um, you can ask and answer questions. We have act active uh, blogs and active wikis and active uh, forums that basically allow you to answer each other's questions or ask questions if you don't know. You can help us with bug uh, fixes. So if you find something that's wrong in the software, not that we would ever have anything wrong in the software, but if you did find something, let us know, and we can work together on getting it fixed, and we will give credit where credit is due. And please, if you have modules that you've written that you're particularly proud of, send them to the Forge. We would absolutely love to have your contributions. Not for us, but for the rest of the community. Any questions on contributing? Okay, Puppet Enterprise. So, why, why Puppet Enterprise? Everything I've talked to so about so far has been about our open source and our open source community. Why do we have a Puppet Enterprise product? We have one basically because we want to make sure that we have a, a version of the software that has specific, meets specific requirements that, that for our enterprise customers, such as um, being able to make sure that we have everything combined and tested to work together for sure, right? So um, when you install Puppet Enterprise, you get the entire stack, and you don't have to go through the testing yourself. 
We want to make sure that we nurture our innovation and that we release things uh, at the right time and in the, in the right format and that we get you all the features that you're looking for in a tested environment and supported environment. We have, um, so we have the upstream open source projects and we are committed to that and all of you are you know, definitely part of our community for that. But we also have the enterprise product, a commercial product, which basically gives you some more business critical uh, functionality. Right? So we have had customers say to us, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Puppet for some of my projects, but I want to make sure that I can deploy it on a business, business critical system. Therefore, it has to be tested. I have to have 24-7 support. I have to have all of these features. And that's what Puppet Enterprise basically gives you. So uh, for us, Puppet Enterprise really is giving you peace of mind because you know that everything is already taken care of. What does Puppet Enterprise give you? It gives you guarantees on the APIs. It gives you an installer, an upgrader. It gives you a graphical user interface. It basically gives you those features that our enterprise customers have come to us and said, these are some of the things we expect in an enterprise class sof software package. Puppet Enterprise is in a content repository um, that can be in the cloud. So we have several cloud deployment mechanisms with Puppet Enterprise. It gives you the centralized management server that has been tested and, ha and gives you access to the graphical user interface, enhanced reporting, and enhanced workflows. And it gives you, like the open so source software distributed agents that you can use for all of your nodes. Now, those uh, nodes can also be in the cloud. So we have additional cloud functionality in Puppet Enterprise that uh, it would not be necessarily be available in Puppet Open Source. Puppet Enterprise is about lifecycle management. In other words, it goes through and it does a discovery, provisioning, and so forth cycle that allows you to check your software, check your configuration, allows you then to orchestrate changes and look at what would it would like if I made these changes and ultimately implement those changes and lastly report uh, on it so that if you were to have an IT audit or any other need from your manager to check on what actually has happened, you have everything documented right away. Okay, why Puppet Enterprise, it gives you dynamic and immediate checking of your nodes, your resources, and their state. You can address all of your nodes simultaneously, so you don't have to go machine by machine by machine. And you can orchestrate all of your changes in a live environment. OK, any questions on that? Any questions on discovery? In provisioning, it allows you to put all of your changes in immediately. It allows you to do that not only to your own data center, but you can do it into the cloud, whether that be VMware, whether that be Amazon Web Services or Google. And it allows you to prevent cloud drift. So um, basically, just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean you should lose control. Right? Puppet Enterprise gives you that ab ability to check and make sure that everything is exactly as you configured it and that you, the systems are available the same way as if they were in your own data center. Configuration. So this is where you define your desired state. Remember we talked about the fact that Puppet is not a, a scripting language where you have to say how to do things. It is a, a language that allows you to go in and define what it is you want in a catalog. The system has to look these ways. And then it allows you to simulate that change. Right? Sometimes you may want to check first what it would look like before you actually deploy it. And then absolutely Im implement the change and report on that change. And that's a continuous cycle. And Puppet, because it is declarative, is what we call idempotent, meaning that if you run 
the application. It doesn't matter how many times you run it. It doesn't matter in which order you run it. It will make sure that the desired state is exactly the way defi you define it in the catalog. Orchestration is about check, uh, doing everything across your entire network of nodes and allowing you to update your machines. You get a, a choice to manage the rate of change that you want to have, and sometimes you may want to apply things immediately. Sometimes you may want to apply things while you're asleep. Right? Orchestration allows you basically to deploy the changes when you want it and how you want it into your environment. Lastly, reporting. It'll, it, it will check on your, all of your nodes. It will check and make sure that everything looks exactly the way it should. And it will then report out. And so if you have a user like me who every day goes in and reconfigures the machine because I can, it will report on that so that you can then come to me and say, Ralph, leave the machine alone. The good news with Puppet, well, many of them, one of the many good news is uh, that you can do this with any number of applications. So Puppet is very flexible and very open, so it can report in your favorite software tool. You don't have to do everything specifically only in Puppet. In the graphical user interface, you have the event inspector that basically lets you look at things. You know, you, you look at your console and you notice something is red. You can click on it. You can find out exactly what happened that caused it to go red. And you can take, for some of these things, you can take immediate action to fix it so that it doesn't go red again. Role-based access control is all about making sure that the right users have the right permissions and that you can install and set up things easily because you have the right levels of control from the get-go. Welcome. We do work with third-party applications. So if you are using Windows, for instance, or if you're using something like Active Directory, you can use that same role-based access control and implement it through Puppet. All right. Any questions so far on Puppet Enterprise, on Puppet open source, and on what, what, what we're doing? OK. What is it that makes Puppet awesome? Well, in a word, what makes Puppet awesome is users like you, our community of contributors and our community of customers. And we're very proud of that. Puppet, obviously, is the core project, the one that allows you to configure your systems idempotently. In other words, you can run it as many times as you, as you want. And you don't have to worry about the proper order of things, because Puppet will figure things out for you. It is a single la sim simple language. Um, it basically, if you look at a Puppet manifest, you can figure out what it does just by following through the logic flow. And it is a system of libraries that, uh, that you can deploy both from the Forge, as well as the, the libraries that are already built into the software itself. M Collective, we will hear about this afternoon from Thomas. And it's basically what allows you to orchestrate your changes across the entire network of your nodes. It allows you to do things in parallel. It allows you to discover things as they go on. And it allows you to specify exactly where you want your changes to apply. You don't have to do apply them to everything all at once. Puppet DB is relatively new. How many people here are using Puppet DB? Okay. Has it been helpful? 
hugely so, right? So PuppetDB, definitely a new thing that we're very proud of. It basically allows you to store your configurations and call up your configurations dynamically. Was there a question? Okay. Hira, how many people are using Hira? Okay. So no more having to specify every parameter immediately in, in the manifest itself. You can now call up Hira facts and you can work with those hierarchically and deploy them across your systems and that way you can reuse some of your manifests across systems simply by calling up different um, Hira facts. Factor. All right, I won't ask how many people here are using Factor. <laughs> if you're not, you're, then we have a whole different problem. But basically, the tool that allows you to discover immediately what is going on on your systems and represent them as facts. And then also it allows you to actually deploy some facts across your nodes. Razor, how many people have heard of Razor? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, Razor is basically a joint project together with EMC and VMware and allows you to deploy Puppet very quickly and very easily to um, EMC and uh, hardware. And um, it is something that we're still developing as we're going on, but, but it is definitely one of the projects that we're very excited about um, in joint cooperation with EMC and VMware. Now, I say we're excited about it. Um, partially, we're excited about its potential. So we are definitely asking for any of you that are interested in Razor to help us make it even greater. So if you have contributions, we definitely take them. And I'd say watch this space. In other words, you know, give, um, w wait to see m more with Razor deployed in the future. Puppet armatures. It's basically proposals, how we can add and enhance Puppet. And I would, again, ask for your contributions as a community to let us know what it is you would like to see. Right? Puppet is driven by the, its community, and we are always eager to work with you. Puppet Forge. OK, I will ask on this one. Have any of you downloaded modules from the Forge? Have any of you uploaded modules to the Forge? Contribute them, OK? So this is, uh, Puppet Forge is a really great way for you to gain fame in the Puppet community. If you have a module that you're particularly proud of, go ahead and upload it, share it with the world, and next thing you know, you'll be instantly recognizable. Now, obviously, if the module isn't very good, then um, you may want to hide, but <laughs> no. Actually, in fact, even if, if you have a problem with the module, right, you can upload it and ask for people for help, and people will help contribute and improve things as we go along. 2.1 million downloads since February 2012. I don't know who counted them, but it's pretty exciting. Puppet test pilot program. So if you ever wanted to fly but couldn't afford it, here's your chance. Um, basically, our user experience group loves to work with members of the community on testing some of our new interfaces, on testing some of our new functionality. And if you would like to work with us, let us know. In the Puppet test pilot program, you can sign up at puppetlabs.com PTP. And you'll get to help shape Puppet, and you get a t-shirt too. <laughs> All right, Puppet Labs, we recently moved to new facilities, and as you can see, you know, we've got Luke and Randall right there um, at the coffee station, and we have an active community of users and, and employees. We're in Portland. If any of you ever make it to Portland, Oregon, we love to have people visit us. Um, we're always open, so don't hesitate to come on by. 
If you look at where we are, um, we just recently made one, uh, I think, uh, one of the top five fastest growing companies in Oregon. Um, because we have, in fact, gone from 55 employees when I started in January 2012 to over 190 employees right now and are still constantly growing. Um, we are in over 42 countries and that has grown from 29 in 2012 and our office space has increased significantly. And ironically, it's constantly getting filled up. We are, in fact, hiring. Um, if there's something that you would like to do and you don't see it on this list, let us know. We're always looking for new talent. Um, personally, there's a technical instructor position, so, um, you know, I'm always open to more Germans in the company. That, that works for me. Training and certification near and dear to my heart. Um, right now, you can get training in just about anywhere in Western Europe, most of it through partners such as Netways, and we're very excited about our partnerships. You can get it in the US, and we are starting to expand into Latin America and Asia Pacific. So um, if you need training somewhere and you don't see it on there, let me know, ralph at puppetlabs.com. I'd be very happy to organize training anywhere. Um, I'd be very happy to go just about anywhere to train. So, uh, you know, especially Fiji, Hawaii, you know, <laughs> I'll go there. Perhaps not Moscow in winter, but okay. We have three training courses right now. We have the Puppet Fundamentals course. Um, okay, just to exercise your arms again, how many people here have taken the Fundamentals course? Oh. Okay, Puppet Fundamentals is our basic introductory course into best practices for Puppet and how to deploy Puppet very quickly and very stably. We then have Advanced Puppet. Advanced Puppet it goes from there and says, okay, now that you know how to do the best practices, let's show you all of the other things that you could do and why you may want to do them than more of the isolated cases. And if you want to develop, in fact, for Puppet uh, by using Ruby, you can take the extending Puppet using Ruby course. That's our curriculum right now. It leads up to certification. Um, we are, in fact, offering testing in the Lilienthal room, and hopefully I'll see some of you there um, after my presentation. Um, but if you are interested in Puppet certification and you feel that you're qualified to take the exam, come and see me in the Lilienthal room. I can give you vouchers for a free exam. Um, but uh, it, it's really a way for you to validate that, hey, yes, I know Puppet, and I, in fact, have earned my credential. We have two certifications, Puppet Professional for the system administrators and Puppet Developer for the uh, Puppet code developers, people who are proficient in Ruby. We now offer training online. So I don't know whether some of you have seen that, but basically we have 15 minute courses that you can take there for free and that show you specific aspects, for instance, managing a resource or working with a factor or various other things, working with the forge. So we have a number of modules available there that you can consume at your own pace online. Okay, any questions? I never knew Germans could be so shy. All right. Yeah.
Right. I can install and I can, I can easily maintain it. If something is not working, I can write a mail and say it. Okay. So the question was, you know, we have Puppet Open Source, which is um, basically your own erector set, right? And we have Puppet Enterprise, which is the ready-made product. Is there something in between? Um, we don't have a product in between right now. What I would recommend is certainly the Puppet Forge might be able to give you many ready-made components that you can use. Um, I would also recommend uh, training. Personally, I recommend training, right? Um, which, which shows you how, how to build clever designs with, with the Erector set, right? Um, but really, our goal is um, with Puppet Enterprise to give you everything that you need to be up and running very quickly, including with M Collective. Um, you know, so uh, we don't have anything in between, particularly at the moment. Okay. On the agent, it's easy to use another user. However, when you have the uh, master unit from yeah. and, and I'm asking if it's possible or if it's on your roadmap to have a solution that is between the root user to have a Okay. Right. So the question is, um, if you want to run the master right now, you have to be the root user. Um, and if you have restrictions on who can be the root user in large enterprises, do we have anything on the roadmap to, to work with that? I am not familiar, David or Amy. There we go. Right. Okay, so. Okay, so um, do me a favor, if you want to send me a quick email, um, then I can check with our services people and see if we have some workarounds. And as David said, we are working on a solution longer term. I saw a hand back there in the, no? Any other questions? Yes. Um, we are administrators and we have to become developers and it was kind of a yeah. So my question is um, it would be nice to be able to test the code to have like um yeah, once you developed the code. Yeah. Okay, so so the, the question was, you know, if you actually develop some code to plug into Puppet, um, how best to test that? Um, well, so Puppet does have the no-op mode, which basically allows you to simulate the changes, but... I see, okay. Yeah, Vagrant would might that you. We also we are working. We have in in the online LMS, for instance, we have uh, virtual machines that you can call up on demand um, to to do some. Now this is meant for testing your training, but but certainly you know um, we are working on on having more of a sandbox environment that would would let you do some testing on in the cloud. That's that's the only thing I can recommend right now. So. Okay, additional questions? Yes. Not really a question or a comment. Ah. This is a first thing. My current problem is the enterprise version. That's this messaging part. It's been installed on the master server. Uh -huh. And I or we don't like to have multiple messaging islands. We have one messaging system and everything that wants messaging should use it. And with the enterprise installer, that's 
You should be able to. So, David, do you know the question here is? Um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. The question here is um, if you have um, a, a, a single instant for all of your messaging, um, could you configure a Puppet Enterprise such that it uses um, the, the messaging that's already configured instead of trying to use it to set up its own messaging? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I believe that you can. Okay. So yeah, you can do it. Okay. So, so the, the comment is you can do it manually, but but it should be easier to do it because part of the promise of enterprises is that you don't have to do things manually. That that's a really good feedback. Um, do me a favor, send me a quick email with, with that, and I will do some more research into that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Right. There are certain people who are supposed to do the classification. Maybe some people that should do some orchestration. Is there going to be a granularity built in that so I can say this user is allowed to do Right. So the question was, thank you. The question was, in the console right now, you have read, write, read only, or administrator. And it, will there be more granularity to define roles beyond that and to perhaps allow you to do some things, but not everything, right? Um, there are a lot of changes and a lot of enhancements coming to the console. Um, I would not be surprised if it wasn't there, but I, I don't know for sure. Um, David, do you? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it is something that's in the works, but. Okay. Thank you. Additional questions? Yes. Right. So, so the comment I, I hear is that if you that it's difficult, complicated to handle temporary files, right? You don't want to create temporary files that are too predictable and and and, and invite everybody and their dog in to, to use them. And on the other hand, you want to make it easy to use in in Puppet. Um, I believe that capability actually exists. Um, Bernd, do you do you know a little bit more about? No. Okay. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure. I, I can research the answer, though. So if you send me an email, I will look into that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, in that case, thank you, everybody, for your time. Uh, I will be here all day. So if you have questions, come and see me. I'll be in, in the testing center in, in a little intel room. Thank you. <laughs>